You know Snoopy and Rudolph and Garfield and the Grinch and the Christmas episodes of your favorite shows in a pinch. But do you recall the most unusual and possibly forgotten Christmas specials of them all? Hey there, folks. It's almost Christmas. And actually, if I was better at scheduling, I might have put this out a little bit earlier because this is coming out a couple days before Christmas. There's a good chance you're already doing all sorts of family stuff. And by the time you get to this, Christmas will have happened and you'll be sick of hearing about it. And you won't watch this. I should have put this out earlier in the month. I don't plan well, to be fair. This is replacing something that I, that I had intended to do, but had a logistics problem. And that's now getting bumped to who knows when. But anyways... <laughs> Welcome to the rambling nonsense that is my channel and my brain. Uh, I want to talk about Christmas specials, but not the ones you know. Now, I'm not necessarily going to claim that these are the weirdest or these most the most obscure, but these are ones I definitely don't see people talking about. And a lot of these are ones I hadn't seen myself before this year. I got brought in and introduced to a whole bunch of stuff I hadn't seen before. And it's worth checking out because there's all the standards. There's the stuff you know and love. There's some stuff out there you might not know about. I'd say give it a shot. So I'm going to go through five examples of Christmas specials that seem to have been forgotten or were missed in the first place or are just a little bit off the beaten path. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them and what I thought about them. Let's start with something adjacent to stuff you know, because Rankin-Bass Christmas specials? Everybody knows those. Rudolph, The Year Without a Santa Claus, where that cold miser, heat miser song comes from. Heck, even the 2D hand-drawn uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas with the mice. Not as well-beloved. I love that one. But not as well-beloved, but a lot of people go like, oh, right, I remember that. How many of you saw The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus? That one, <laughs> that one's a trip. And if you've actually rewatched some of the stuff like Rudolph, even that stuff was kind of a trip, but by that, even by that metric, this is, this is something else. So a couple things about this. This is done in the 80s, so it's actually way more refined stop motion animation and flatly looks better than Rankin Bass's much more famous and well-known and beloved stop motion animation things like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. This looks quite good. The Motion is way smoother. The mouths especially work so much better than I'm used to seeing from Rankin Bass. Now, you might just think it's, okay, so it's just a Santa Claus story, right? Well, it is. So it's based off a Frank L. Baum book, the uh, original author of the Oz books, Wizard of Oz and pff, all the ones that came after that. And if you've actually ever read any Frank Albaum, especially if you've read any of his later Oz stuff or like his non-Oz related material, you'll know the guy, the guy, <laughs> he went places, pulled weird stuff and acted like it was the most nonchalant thing on the world. And that's very much on display here. This is based off one of his stories and the short version, and I'm not going to go beat for beat because I still want you to have a reason to watch it. I don't want to spoil anything, but it's basically... Santa Claus as raised by woodland spirits and fairies. That's his origin. He was raised by the fae. And it gets weirder from there. But if you like the Rankin-Bass stuff or you have any nostalgia for it at all, this will tickle that nostalgia because it's going to look like a refined version of stuff you already love. But it's also going to give you something a little weirder, a little more unusual, and honestly, just fun. Next up, one that I... Oh boy, I don't even really know how to explain this one. It's called Cosmic Christmas. And it's it's about some aliens that land on Earth and a young boy who tries to explain to them the concept of Christmas. And some people in the area are kind of freaking out about the aliens. Some people are not. And it's the looking at Christmas through outsider eyes thing that you might get a little bit of from something like Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm-hmm. If you didn't notice these earrings, I feel like they're worth highlighting. You know, there's that aspect, but also like the boy realizing 
he's having a hard time finding something that he can show them that actually truly embodies the spirit of Christmas as he, as a small child, understands it. He keeps trying these different things, but it's not quite showing them what he feels when Christmas comes. It's really sweet, and it is just slightly weird. Honestly, the tone of it, it feels a fair bit like something that, well, something this wholesome wouldn't have been. But if you've ever seen the movie Heavy Metal or read the magazine Heavy Metal, its tone feels like a wholesome uh, version of something that would have appeared in the Heavy Metal movie. The style of animation, the feel of the performances, and just the general overall mood of the thing kind of fits in that we're just here to experience this bit of weirdness right now. Come with us if you want. Like I said, comparing it to heavy metal might be a mistake on my part because tonally it is not that at all, but there's just something about the feel of it. It very much gave me that overall uh, sense of things. And if you like that sort of thing and you want something that feels a little bit like that, that is safe to actually expose the kids to, give Cosmic Christmas a try. Now, the next one, if you are from my generation or were watching children targeted entertainment in the 80s, you might know this one, but it seems to have largely been lost to time if you didn't catch it at the time it came out. And that is Will Vinton's Claymation Christmas. Now, if you don't know the name Will Vinton, he made a name for himself doing a claymation work, most famously the California Raisins, who, yes, naturally do make an appearance uh, in this, as do some uh, creations for some of his earlier stuff. I actually know Will Vinton's claymation best from a dinosaurs sort of special that he participated in, and he reused some of those models for this. What I like about this one, in addition to assuming that his style of claymation doesn't put you off, because I have talked to some people who find it uncanny and unsettling, and if that is the case, feel free to skip it. But if that's not the case for you, What's nice about this is it doesn't try and tell a story. Not that it's a problem for ones that do, but it's really more than anything just giving fun little claymation music videos for a number of Christmas carols. We get things like the Carol of the Bells. We get things like We Three Kings, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and it's, it is largely just giving us these songs as performed, quote-unquote, by these claymation characters, but it it just gives it that unique sense and feel that Will Vinton brought to his style of claymation. And if you either have a love of stop motion animation and you aren't familiar with Will Vinton's, this is pretty short. It might be a good introduction to his work. Or if you are familiar with his work, but you haven't seen this, give it a look. Or in my case, if you actually start watching it and realize, oh crap, I have seen this before, like over 30 years ago, look it up. Next, I want to talk about 12 Tiny Christmas Tales by, of all people, Bill Plimpton. So, it's hard to know what people know Bill Plimpton from, if you know him at all. I actually think there's a pretty good chance that a lot of people, especially younger than me these days, would know him from a number of Simpsons couch gags that he did in his signature sort of squiggle animation style. But he's been doing animated shorts and features for ages, most famously uh, ones like Your Face and Guard Dog. Also been hired like just for a lot of commercials and stuff uh, throughout the 80s, 90s, early 2000s even. This was a special that he did for Cartoon Network. Now. I say Bill Plimpton and Cartoon Network. If you're familiar with a lot of Bill Plimpton's work, you might you might immediately think, oh, this is an Adult Swim thing, isn't it? Because Bill Plimpton, you dig into his work. At the, <laughs> the man has a very distinct sense of humor. Um, but funnily enough, this came out a couple years before Adult Swim was a thing. So this is wholesome Bill Plimpton. So this is still his signature look, animation style, the still occasional bit of absolute anarchic chaos going on, but it is largely wholesome. It is a grandmother sharing 12 different, I believe original, I didn't recognize any of them, short Christmas stories, all sweet, all appropriate for kids, and just told with his visual stylings, which is unmistakable and incredibly unique. So while I kind of went into this, because I know the man's work, expecting something a little more chaotic than what I got. It's actually kind of nice to see the style from an artist who I know can get very not safe for work and very off the wall in a way that I actually generally enjoy. Just see him bring it back just a little bit. 
and still have that same core, but package it in a family-friendly way. Some might think of something like that as selling out, but I'm like, no, that's still definitely Bill Plimpton. He toned himself down a little bit for this, and it's actually kind of sweet. Before I get to the one that I want to recommend the most emphatically, um, I'm going to make a uh, note for kind of an honorable mention. I'm going to bring up Christmas in Tattertown, which is done by Ralph Bakshi. Now, I'm not going to give this one a blanket recommendation because it's very Ralph Bakshi. Like, it, it, again, it is family friendly, but the level of visual chaos, well, not just visual, visual, audio, etc., chaos that you get in a lot of his works, it's very much present here. So if you like... Ralph Bakshi, and you haven't checked out Christmas in Tattertown, definitely give it a look. If you're not familiar with Ralph Bakshi, I'm not sure this is the best thing to experience uh, of his. And if you don't like his style, absolutely avoid it. But if you are familiar with his work and you think that it has merit or you've enjoyed some of this, this is worth seeking out and tracking down. But I can't give it a blanket recommendation. I can't really give a blanket recommendation for Bakshi's work at all. He's just... Even by the metrics of this, which is admittedly weird stuff, he's a he's a lot. He's not just weird, he's a lot. So let's get on to the last one proper. And this is the one I want to underline about five times and say, find this. And I suppose that's worth mentioning. A lot of these can be in odd places. Since they aren't as well remembered, um, you might have to do a little bit of digging around places where wouldn't you wouldn't normally go to find these things. And that can be, you know, these things get re-uploaded just to YouTube every now and then. Seems like the copyright holders either don't realize or don't care. They don't get taken down all that often or they get re-uploaded and they're still there anyways. Daily Motion, Internet uh, Archive, things like that. Look around, you'll find these things, but they're not going to be on the standard streaming services for the most part. This last one. I'm actually a fairly big fan of Berkeley Brethed, who is best known at this point as a daily comic strip writer. He wrote a strip called Bloom County, which I liked a lot, later turning into just a Sunday strip called Opus. But he's also done uh, various children's books and, and other things, and I've always liked his art style, his sense of humor, and there's a real sweetness underneath it. Like, Bloom County could get very bitter and very cynical and very political at times, but there was still an undercurrent of just kindness to it that I always got a sense from his work. And that may honestly be best exemplified by the Christmas special focusing on the characters of Opus and also Bill the Cat called A Wish for Wings That Work. I'm not going to go through this beat for beat, but this is wonderful. This is like easily one of my new favorite Christmas specials. This is going in the annual rotation. The other ones I'll, I'll definitely watch again, but like there's a small number of things like I need to be sure I watch that every year. This is now added to that list. It focuses on Opus, who is a penguin. He's a very sweet penguin. He can get frustrated and heated sometimes, but he's generally a very kind-hearted, sweet penguin, and he just wants to be able to fly. But of course, he's a flightless bird. So this follows... Uh, a little bit sort of his frustrations with that and his writing to Santa, wishing for wings that work. And I don't want to give you too much more than that because I think it's just sweet and funny. Um, there's some wonderful just uh, vo both visual gags that you have to kind of watch out for, but also some of the uh, some of the guest cast. Listen, you, you'll catch a famous voice in there if you're paying attention. And I'm not going to say who it is. You can say in the comments, that's fine, if you if you happen to know. But that was a fun discovery for me to make, and I'm not going to ruin it for you. But I also want to highlight the fact that Bill the Cat is in this. And if you're not familiar with Bill the Cat, Bill the Cat was effectively created to be the anti-Garfield, uh, e even in-universe. Because it's like, well, we can we can come up with a, with a cute, marketable orange cat. Here, look at this. And it's Bill. What? <laughs> And Bill, <laughs> Bill is the most absurd, disgusting thing that has ever been put into a daily comic strip. And he's perfectly captured here. And I love Bill so much. And I love that they didn't tone him down like, nope, that's him. <laughs> that's definitely him. So this, this one, I, like I recommend all these. I really, truly do. But this is the one that if you're only going to check out one of these that I have recommended to you. 
make it this one. It is so good and so sweet and so heartwarming and so funny. It's, it's, it's everything I love in a good Christmas special. It's all here. Definitely check it out. Have you seen any of the things that I've talked about? Do you have your own personal favorite, obscure, unusual, or unique Christmas specials that you consider to be vital to you, but people may not have heard of? Whatever you've seen, whatever you think, drop something down in the comments and let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills. That would be a lovely Christmas gift. Um, but I also know, like, family takes priority and all that. I, I, I get it. So if you can't help me out that way, like, share, subscribe are also a big help. Videos like this, uh, even if I had gotten it out in a more timely manner, which obviously I didn't, but even if I had, um, these don't tend to do great for me. So the like, share, and subscribe would obvi obviously be greatly appreciated. But there's all links to other stuff I do down in the description. You can check that out as well. But really more than anything, as we get ever closer to the end of the year, I really want you to remember that you are beautiful, you are valid, and you are loved. You are the council. I am just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. Time for me to thank my highest supporting patrons. Robin Moore, Zubin Lafula, Goddess Elida, Oliver V, Tarak, The Thing That Goes Doink in the Anime, Ruth, Goes with the Gazarian, Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Geek Filter, Melinda Walters, Toku BL Hubian, Jen, Ozzy Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Renabi Likes the Poodle, Robin Powell, T Love, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Dave Hall, Quite Bearish, Rosalind Bennett, Pal Barabad Jagal, I'm sorry for whatever butchery I did to that, and Mira G. I know I've kind of done like funky stuff saying them the last few times. I had this whole idea where I was gonna like sing them to the tune of Carol of the Bells, but then I realized it's gonna like clash with my outro music and I didn't really want to rework that or just cut the outro music out altogether. That felt weird, so I just I just didn't I just didn't I just didn't do a thing this time. But now I've told you that I didn't do a thing. So I've made a thing about there being no thing. Okay. Thanks for sticking around. Bye.